first question I asked was, what do you think about Sharia? And he said, Sharia? There is no Sharia. My name is Peggy Mast. I've been a state representative for 20 years in the state of Kansas. I represent uh, the area around Emporia, Kansas. Tell me the story about the uh, Muslim Brotherhood leader who came and talked to you about Sharia. You, you asked him about Sharia. I had an individual come into my office one day and sit down and he said he was from Turkey. And of course he was trying to persuade me to go on a free trip to Turkey. And uh, so I just started asking him a few questions. The first question I asked was, what do you think about Sharia? And he said, Sharia? There is no Sharia. I said, no Sharia? He said, no, no Sharia. And I said, you have billboards in Kansas City on I-35 that have Sharia got questions. What is that? His response to me was, ah, oh, Sharia. He said, that's just judiciary. I said, Sharia law? Ah, oh, Sharia law, yes, yes. So uh, the second question that I asked him was if he had read Syed Kutub, and he just brightened up instantly and said, yes, a great writer. And so then I proceeded to talk to him. I asked him if he uh, followed uh, Fatul Gulen, and he said Gulen was a great preacher. And uh, so that's... And what organization did he represent? He represented the Turquoise Foundation based in Kansas City. So I had a military individual that was coming back to my community after having oversight over a prison in Iraq. And I was pretty anxious to talk to him about his experiences. And he told me that they had to type the prisoners as they came in into either yellow, orange, or red. Well, he said that the yellow people were maybe people that had been bribed into doing what they had done, you know, like planning an IED or something like that. But they really weren't serious about, you know, being uh, jihadis. They just wanted to feed their families. And uh, the orange people were in a different category. The red uh, people were the ones who were virulent in the fact that they wanted to commit jihad. And uh, then he, he said they're just uneducated and they need more knowledge. So we want to treat them and their families very well while they're there and become their friends. And we give them Qurans and teach them how to read. And that way they'll know that Islam is a religion of peace and they won't want to do war anymore. <laughs> Well, I was in the process of trying to get American Law for American Courts passed in the state of Kansas, and we'd gotten into the Senate, and um, someone found out that there was a divorce case that was active here in Wichita, Kansas at the time, and um, that was a professor of the Wichita State University, Egyptian professor, who went back to the Middle East to marry a second wife and then brought her here. For some reason that was ending up in a divorce and he wanted it adjudicated under Sharia law but she had a relative in the Middle East or in uh, the Eastern on the East Coast and he told her that she should flee to the American courts so it was in the process of being determined and um, the the husband was saying that it should be under Sharia because the contract was actually took place in the Middle East rather than in the United States. And uh, so the brother was willing to have a press conference, actually wanted a press con conference to bring the bill to light so that possibly his sister would be able to get this through the process in the American courts. And so money was brought forward in, and he was offered uh, the opportunity to fly back from the, from the East Coast into Wichita, picked up his sister, and headed for Topeka. But somewhere along the line, someone got to him, and when he showed up in the Capitol, he didn't bring his sister in. He had parked the car about three blocks away from the Capitol to protect her. And he came in agitated and telling me, no press conference, no press conference. We were having the press conference at 2 o'clock. The reporters were already set up and ready for it. And I was out in the foyer arguing with him, trying to persuade him to come in and trying to explain to him I was doing something to help his sister. 
And, um, but he kept saying, no, Sharia is good. I don't want it in America, but Sharia is good. And um, so anyway, I had to carry through with the press conference on my own there. But the press was standing there, and they, um, I just looked at the people because I didn't have anyone to stand beside me to talk about the case, so I told the story. And as I was telling the story then, uh, when I finished up the first thing, this guy comes up and he puts a microphone underneath my head, face and he says, so what are you going to do when people call you racist? And I turn around and I said, can you tell me how people would call me racist for trying to get a law through that protects women from other countries when they come to the United States and they get equal rights under our law? How does that make me a racist? How am I going to benefit from this bill? And so they didn't even put any voice or anything on the press that night. They had a picture of me walking around and they explained that I was, that I had, you know, had a press conference about the American Law for American Courts bill, but it didn't, they didn't have any quotes from me. Hey, thank you for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel right down here if you're not already subscribed. If you want to see more of our UTT videos, just click here or here and sign up for our newsletter and join us. Let's put freedom back on the offensive where it belongs.